In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create and also um, unpick flowcharts, uh, which is another method of program design. So what is a flowchart? Well, if you think of it, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step way of solving a problem. A graphical, a flowchart is a graphical representation of a step-by-step -step solution to that particular problem. So it's like a graphical algorithm. Now there's three boxes that you have to, or three shapes that you have to know about in flowcharts, and I'll attempt to describe them here. The first one is a parallelogram, and that is used for inputs from the user and outputs back to the user in the program. The middle one there is a little diamond shape, is a decision. So this is a bit like an if statement, where you have one path into the decision, and then on answering a question, you've got a yes path and a no path. And so that helps you do, you know, whether the condition evaluates the true or false. And then the last one is just a normal rectangle, and that's a process in the program. So that's something that doesn't require any user interactions, but it will do something within your program. So let's look at this uh, flowchart example. So the first thing that we're going to do in the flowchart is we're going to start the program. And then we're going to get name from the user. So on the right hand side, I've got some pseudocode here, so you know what's uh, happening. So it's just getting a name. And then we take the name, we pass the flow of the program into a decision. And this decision checks to see if the name is Ian. Okay. Um, if it is Ian, so if the um, condition evaluates to true, then we can output to put hi Ian. But because decisions always have two um, pathways, there's also a no direction. So if the condition evaluates the false, we just output who, and that's how you'd write it in pseudocode. So if name equals Ian, then output hi Ian, else output who, and end if. And then we should stop our program. So flowcharts must have a stop condition or a, st a stop section, um, also called a terminator. And both parts or both parts of the flowchart just come into that stop. So let's look at a second flowchart problem. So the first thing we're going to do is get the number from the user. And on the right there, we've got our pseudocode that matches up to the flowchart. And then once the user's input a number to the program, we're going to add one to it simply, just number equals number plus one. Once we've done that, that process feeds into an output or parallelogram. So we output it to the screen and then the program stops. Nice and simple. In our third example, we're going to use a process here to set the value of the number variable to zero. And then we're going to have a decision and we're going to say is number equal to 100. Remember, there's two directions. OK, um, if it's not equal to 100, what we're going to do is display number to the user and then increase number by one. And then we're going to do something new. We're going to put the direction of the flowchart back to the top, just above the decision. And what this does is this creates a sort of loop. OK, now we can write it out like this with our uh, preconditional loop to say that while number is less than 100, display the number, increment the number, and that will do exactly the same as what happens here. OK, it will continually go around until number becomes 100. When number becomes 100, we, we uh, display stop to the user and then we stop the program. So although it doesn't translate directly to pseudocode, okay, this is how you uh, create a loop using a flowchart. Let's look at one more flowchart example. So we're going to take in age from the user and we're, in, we're immediately going to test it and we're going to say is the age greater than five. If it is greater than five, we're going to test the age again. And we're going to say, is the age greater than 11? If it is, we're going to test the age again, and we're going to say, is the age greater than 18? Okay. If, however, age is not greater than five, we're just going to output and say, no school. If age is greater than five, but not greater than 11, we're going to say, output primary. If age is greater than 11, but not greater than 18, we're going to say, output secondary. And if age is greater than 18, we're just going to output work. So a nice, simple um, 
nested if here. Okay, so if I just write this out in pseudocode. It's not going to quite um, look right because my flow chart is a little bit too wide. So if the age is greater than five, then we immediately test again to see if the age is greater than 11. And then if it is, we're going to test it again. And then we can start to move back. So if it's not greater than 18, but it is greater than 11, then we can output secondary. And then if it's greater than five, but not greater than 11, we can output primary. And if it's not greater than five, we can output no school. And so this is how you represent a nested if using a flowchart. I hope this introduction to flowcharts has been useful. Uh, make sure that you understand the three different shapes we talked about in the video, and hopefully you'll see how pseudocode can match up to flowcharts, because usually in exam situations, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to take some provided pseudocode and translate it into flowcharts, or take a flowchart and translate it into pseudocode.